To detail an erection view, we need to start by opening up our drawings page. So inside of our drawings page, we'll go into our placement and if we hover over this, we can see that specifies detail erection views. Once I select that, it's going to bring up our select erection views. If you do not see any of your views in here, that is likely because you either do or do not have the show for detailing checked on. If I uncheck that, we can now see our erection views in there, or if you saw them before, that is correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to select AB plan, and then we're going to go ahead and select settings. Once we select settings, we're going to go through and take a look at some of these different settings we have when detailing our erection views. Now all of these settings that we're looking at here, you can set by default, or you can set that up on a view by view basis. Starting from the top here, we're going to look through our appearance tab, our annotations tabs, and then our piece marks tab. First is going to be our steel member style. When we are detailing this, we have an option to detail this as an automatic steel member style, or we can do it manually. We will get into those options a little bit later. For now, we're just going to worry about the automatic. When it is automatic, we do have options for our steel member style that can either be stick, wire, solid, stick and wire, or stick and solid. You can see examples of each of those here. If we had concrete members in here, we could specify what style do we want that in. Same styles we had previously. Same for rebar if we had rebar. And then if we are showing our members as wire, we have an option to show our 3D hidden lines as either removed, so we don't see those, dashed, or solid. We then have an option to show 3D main member material. So for a column, that would be your wide flange. You have an option to show 3D submaterial. 3D submaterial is going to be any materials that are attached to the member. We have the option to show the 3D shop bolts, the 3D field bolts, the 3D holes, shop welds, and field welds. So we're going to leave the defaults checked for those. We have an option to show the stair outline, which in this case we don't have a stair, so it doesn't really matter if that's on or off. We have an option to show our shear tab location on erection views. Well, again, in this case, we're looking at just our anchor bolt plan, so again, that doesn't really apply here. If we had concrete, we could show hatching for that and the scale of that. We could set up a status display criteria. We will get into that a little deeper later. We can show a crane placement, show the steel laydown for that, and then move the grids as needed for that crane placement. Again, we don't have any cranes in here, so we don't need to worry about those options. We have an option to reset member line pens. So if we made any changes previously, when we're redetailing that, we could have all those member lines reset back to default. We can specify a specific pen type for existing members. And then our line type for that existing member. We have the option to show vertical braces that are not in this plane as is, shown, or hidden. Same for horizontal braces that are not in this plane. And then our member orientation indicators. Do we want to see all, none, conditional, or as is? Member orientation indicators will only be shown when the member style is stick or stick and wire. This will give you a small preview of what direction the material is running, and you would only see a section of that material. If you have it set as conditional, you can then go in and specify when you are going to see those member orientation indicators. And then you have the option, where applicable, generate individual rebars instead of rebar run objects when the associated number of runs is less than or equal to. And again, we aren't using any rebar for this, so we don't need to worry about showing that. Next, we're going to go into our annotations tab. Inside of our annotations tab, we have the option to remove any drawing annotations. So we have the option to remove none, system, or all. 
Now this is going to be a little more important once we get into further redetailing of these erection views. Being that this is the first time I'm going to be detailing that, we don't really need to worry about this, but if we leave this set as none, and then the annotate erection views that is right below this is checked, when we detail this view a second time, you're going to have double the annotations. So all of your dimensions will be doubled, any system added labels will also be doubled. So you do just need to be careful when you are going about detailing this and making sure you have the correct options set for this. You have the option then to dimension grids above and left of the structure. And then if you are using that, you have an option to add an overall dimension with the above and left grid dimensions. You have the option for dimension grids below and right of the structure. Again, you have that overall dimension there as well. And then you have an option to add overall dimensions to section view grids. You can annotate finite grid lines in place. If that is unchecked, finite grid lines will not be shown in this view. You have an option to show grid names in the non-plan views. And then what is your height of the secondary grid bubbles? Do you want that the same as primary or below the primary as shown here? Next is a checkbox we will want to use for this, and that is the option for dimension anchor molt layout. With that checked on, we can now specify where do we want our bottom of base plate elevation as? Do we want that in absolute or a reference elevation? And then what do we want our bottom of base plate prefix to be? So this is going to call out how our elevation is shown. We can type in any label we want here, but in this case, I'm going to leave that the B slash BP space EL and then colon. We have the option to scale an anchor bolt layout. If scale anchor bolt layout is checked on, an anchor bolt layout can be scaled up and then that centers of the column and the centers of the base plates are not affected, but those dimensions and the base plates themselves will be scaled up by whatever factor is set here. You have an option to explode an erection view. You can generate named locations. You can detail with revisions. And then you can specify your character height for your grid bubble labels. Your minimum piece mark and section size height allowed. Your member elevations, do you want that in absolute reference or do you not want to see any of those? And that will only show those different elevations based on what the view is saved at. So in this case where our anchor bolt plan is saved at 99 foot 2, if we had say a beam in there at 99 foot 4, it would show either 99 foot 4 or plus 2 inches. On the erection view, do we want to show camber on the members? Do we want to see custom properties on members? Do we want to see the section size on custom members? Denote non-standard materials? Show the number of studs on members? Do we want to see the member number on the erection views? Do we want the call out for non-standard field bolts? And then do we want to show field welds? And if we are, do we want to show the field weld lengths? Next, I'm going to go to the piece marks tab. And inside of here, we have an option to check overriding of piece marks and section sizes. If that is checked on, if you're in a congested or a busy erection view, the system is going to try and move those different marks and section sizes around so they aren't overlapping or touching each other. You have an option to relocate the piece marks and other member labels back to default locations. So with this, if we are redetailing an erection view, that is going to relocate those back to their original locations and be like starting all over again. You have an option to allow member piece marks to break lines and wire member edges, as shown here. You can always hide joist piece marks. You can include base plate minor piece marks on the anchor bolt layout. So if we don't want to see that base plate minor mark, we could uncheck that and it would not show that minor mark. And then we have the option to show cross section marks so we can show new piece marks and section sizes. And then we can show, hide, or leave them as is for the old piece marks and section sizes. And then we have the exact same options for our non cross section marks. The last change we're going to make here before we say OK is we're going to go to the Appearance tab and we're going to set our steel member style to wire. 
Once you have this steel member style set as wire, we are going to go ahead and say OK. And then we're going to say OK to this. So again, we only want our AB plan or our anchor bolt plan selected. And then I will say OK. Now we can see it has finished generating that erection view. We really have two different options here. I can say OK, or I can check on the checkbox for close when done. So that way, when I'm redetailing or detailing any more erection views, as soon as it completes, this window is going to close. So I'm going to check on close when done. 